In a previous video, we calculated the energy demand for a drying process. I promise to come back to you regarding two things. First, why the energy needed per kilogram of evaporated water is higher than the evaporation enthalpy. And two, why it is unrealistic to assume 100% relative humidity in the outgoing air. In this video, we will address the first question, while the second question is addressed in the video linked above. To reiterate the task, uh, we had an incoming fresh air at 20 degrees centigrade and an outgoing air with a temperature of 25 degrees and a wet temperature of 25 degrees. The evaporation enthalpy at 25 degrees is 24.42 kilo per kilogram of water but our calculations indicated we needed 28.95 kilo per kilogram evaporator, so that is 452 kilo per kilogram more. The fresh air flow was calculated to 10,526 kilogram per hour and the amount of water evaporated to 120 kilogram per hour. So what do we need the energy for? In drying with warm air, a, you need energy to heat dry air, so not counting the water in the air, uh, from the temperature of the fresh air to the temperature of the outgoing air. B, you need energy to heat the drying goods to the wet temperature of the air that enters the adiabatic dryer. If you don't do that before letting the goods into the dryer, the air in the adiabatic dryer will not follow the adiabatic cooling line. In our example, the drying goods had already been heated up to the wet temperature, so this does not contribute to the difference in our case. C. Energy is needed to evaporate the water. This is typically what dominates the energy demand for a drying process. D. Energy is needed to heat the goods to its outgoing temperature. In our calculation, we have actually assumed that the outgoing temperature of the drying goods is the wet temperature of the air. In most of the calculation we do in our course, we essentially assume that the drying goods is surface wet even after the drying process, which is a bit silly. Because after the critical point in the drying process, the air will no longer follow the adiabatic cooling line and the drying goods will be heated up above the wet temperature. But in comparison, however, the extra energy demand for this might be small in comparison to the evaporation enthalpy. So, in our case, this does not contribute to the difference. Finally, E. Energy is needed to heat the evaporated water from tea wet to the temperature of the outgoing air. In our simple example, we assume that the relative humidity of the outgoing air was 100%, and hence the dry temperature of the outgoing air is the same as the wet temperature of the outgoing air. So thus, this does not contribute to the difference in our simple example. So in our simple example, it is only the heating of dry air from the fresh air temperature 20 degrees to the outgoing temperature 25 degrees that should contribute to the difference. The heat capacity of air in this temperature range is approximately 1 kilo per kilogram in Kelvin, and we get per kilogram of water evaporated 10,526 kg of dry air per hour divided with 120 kg of water per hour times 1 kilo per kilogram in Kelvin times 5 degrees Celsius or 439 kilo per kilogram of water. We can compare this with the excess energy we needed, 452 kg per kilogram. The difference between 439 and 452 gives us a hint on the accuracy of our readings of the diagrams and our calculations. When doing graphical solutions, you should not expect to get high accuracy in your results. The strength of the graphical solutions instead lies in how they illustrate the underlying theory, making it easier to understand how the system works. For any doubtful viewers out there, Let's compare with the computer simulation instead. In the computer simulation, I get the extra energy needed as 444.347 kilo per kilogram. And if we simplify a bit and take an approximate average of the heat capacity for the air, 
we get the extra energy uh, just for heating air as 444.240 so the same 